Hey yeah, everybody, this is uh, Ryan here with you again. Um, on the way over to Manassas, Virginia this morning. Uh, started up at about 10.30 uh, last night, uh, mountain time in Boise, Idaho. I was out there at the TA. Uh, drove about 555 miles, I guess I showed on here before my eight hour break. Uh, it's been running about 75 up here, uh, not too far from Wyoming, Sutter, uh, Wyoming. And um, I had a uh, low intake manifold pressure uh, code come on. And uh, sometimes with that, I get a derate on the engine, and that, it usually happens about the same place up here. So I think it's because of the elevation and uh, the different atmospheric pressure, and, and it throws it like a false positive. Because um, I typically just delete it, and I don't have any other, don't have any trouble with it anywhere else in the country. Um, so I was going to show you. I know I've talked about it with the PDI. The PDI I show it. Um, it will clear it, but it doesn't clear it permanently. It uh, it like puts it in like an inactive mode. And if I go ahead and clear it on the PDI and drive out of here, it, and probably in an hour or so, if I if I push it a little bit, you get uh, you know kind of hard on the truck, it will uh, kick that D rate back in. Now, if I use the uh, the Bosch, the HTS 200 or the 250 now that they've got out, it will delete, it will uh, close out that uh, D rate and everything, and um, you know and it won't come back until um, that happens again. But it's usually right up here in the same area, um, you know, 7,500, uh, 8,000 feet. I usually get it uh, through here. Um, not every time. Um, you know, I, I'm through here probably once or twice a month, maybe a little bit more. But uh, about every other time I come through here to do it. So I don't know. Like I said, I think it has something to do with the uh, elevation and the lower pressure up here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you on the PDI what it looks like. And then I'll hook the Bosch up and, and show you what it looks like when I delete it. Okay, so here's uh, that SPN 102 engine intake manifold pressure low, moderate severity. Then it throws that engine protection torque D rate, and that's not a good thing because if you've ever had that, this thing will not pull its way out of a wet paper bag, so it sucks pretty bad. Um, and you'll get this this light, and that's how you know if you don't have a PDI or something. That's typically you know you got a D rate or something serious wrong, but. Um, like I said, I can't delete it on, it, it, it'll delete it, but it won't deactivate it completely. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the truck off, uh, disconnect the PDI, and we're gonna hook up the Bosch, and I'll show it to you on there, and we'll delete it. Okay guys, so I got the uh, the Bosch hooked up here. And, uh, we're gonna go ahead, got the ignition on. We're gonna go ahead and get in here. Continue. Okay, so there's the intake manifold pressure uh, low. Let's move it down. There's the uh, D rate, and this is that service code for the uh, that's always on there. I need to get Insight and delete that, or uh, do that DPF install. But um, so this is the one we're concerned about. So we're gonna go ahead and erase these and now the only thing that we should have left is going to be that um, that DPF code or service code so everything's off and we are good to go. So we go ahead and get out of here, hook the PDI back up, and see what we got. Okay, so I got the PDI hooked back up and checked it, re reset everything, and um, everything's cleared off except for that DPF service code. And uh, that's pretty much it. Simple as that. So that's uh, pretty much it. Um, took me five minutes to clear that out and uh, no big deal. Now that's that's why you got to have a tool like that, like the Bosch or something somewhere out here on the road if you're doing this yourself. 
Um, because if I would have that come up, I mean, I, I got still got to go over Sherman Hill here, um, you know, getting over to Cheyenne where I'm going to stop at today. And that's a pretty big pull. And I'm, I'm not very heavy, but I know this truck uh, pretty well. And when it goes in that D rate, I mean, I, I'll be down to 20 mile an hour on that grade. I mean, it, it'll, it'll weigh, I'm pretty tight on this trip and with time. And I don't have time to be running, you know, 20, 25 mile an hour upgrades when I can run 55, 60 with full power. Um, so, and if I would have stopped at Kenworth or a dealer or someplace, a Cummins dealer, I, it's Saturday morning. Uh, I, it's hard telling they might not even be able to get you in. I mean, and you're, you're with, when you're derated that much, I mean, it, this thing, I can't even hardly keep up to 75 mile an hour, even on flat ground. It, it's sometimes a struggle. Luckily I was pulling off for a 30 minute break here and it just did it like five minutes before I stopped. So I would stop it anyways. And, um, you know, kind of worked out right good and cleared off. But, um, and, and not to mention if I did have to pull into a dealer and if they were open, I mean, they're probably going to charge me 300 to $500 to hook up and clear that. Then they're going to try to sell me everything in the world that I don't need. Because these trucks, they will throw false positives like that. You may not, it could be just a, a, a blip in the data that comes through that throws the false positive. You could have a little a wiring problem somewhere, um, you know, with salt and copper wiring. They don't mix very well. On um, this truck, it, there's, there are some places um, I want to replace some wiring harness in certain areas um, that I think could be problems down the road. Um, so little things like that, you could have really nothing wrong per se with the truck, but you could have, like I said, you could get false positives of just with a blip of bad data that comes through from the sensor um, that's inaccurate or in our, like what I think up here with the with atmospheric pressure showing that I have low intake manifold pressure because I know there's nothing wrong with the turbo because it's uh, I, I've only got about, I put the, this new turbo on myself, but it's uh, only got about 100,000 miles on it. Um, if that, so I know nothing's an issue there, and um, I normally push pretty good boost. So. But um, I just wanted to show you guys that why I stopped, and uh, and like I said, that it's that that that's when it pays to have that little tool. Like I said, that that probably just paid for itself. This right there again. I mean, uh, it's as simple as that. So um, hope that helps out. Uh, like the video, uh, subscribe, and um, you know hit the bell thing for our uh, to get the updates on new videos and all that. Appreciate the support and the comments. Uh, if you got any questions, feel free to ask, and uh, we'll see you all next time.